Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me here, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and we, today we begin a new campaign in Equestria at War with a new update, 1.8, In the Shadows of Mountains. Now, I don't play this game or this mod very often, but with the new update, I figured, you know what, why not? And I'm choosing the Bakaran Republic just because I've heard they really love their navy, and I know I'm one of the weird people for Hoi 4 that loves their navy a whole lot, and I love customizing stuff, but here's... Here's what we're going to do. Custom game rules. It's going to be default, loud, block, whatever. I have no idea. Just default stuff. Historical AI focus is off because I don't know what's going to happen because I don't play Equestrian War too often, but sometimes I do. Uh, but like I said, if you want to read about the perfect storm, go right ahead. Um, yeah. There's an election coming up at, at the end of this year, 1007. Uh, there's been a lot of political violence. Deep divisions have opened up between those who seek to reform the coalition from within and those who wish to break away and, forget, and forge new order for the Riverlands. Now... I'm a simple guy. I just want to build a big old navy. So, we got to be aware of what we have. So, National Spirit, we get some daily naval XP. This makes me so happy already. I love the navy too much, man. Uh, let's see. Attack and defense of core territory. Less planning speed. Less organization. The Ancient Republic. Daily political power gain. Pretty good. More surrender limit. More stability. The election. Going crazy. Treated coal stream member. Cult stream member. And then we have uh, modest illiteracy. So, not too bad. I'm probably, uh, we are Harmony, Underwater Lily, Communist, Firm Scowl, pre Supremacy, huh, Is, and, oh, not a line, T-Dip, so, oh, yeah, yeah, so, actually, are we in a, yeah, we are in the River Coalition, which is kind of nice, so, let's go ahead and, we want to choose a national focus, but to understand that, we got to understand that we have the politics and the presidential race, over here, Really, in the upcoming election, there are four parties with any chance of emerging victorious. The BFZ, led by Firm Scowl, are vocally opposed to what they view as a corrupt river coalition and instead wish to see the riverland freed from tyranny under united under Bakaran leadership. TDIP's BSP believe in preserving liberty first and foremost and are promising limited government and maximum freedom for Bakara citizens. The incumbent SDH, headed by President Water Lily, are fierce supporters of the River Coalition and view the project as the best hope for peaceful and prosperous riverlands. Finally, Bray Foam and the ZDS seek to upend the status quo and bring economic equality and the liberation of the working classes, uh, sharing the revolutionary Car Caramel Hayes' radical outlook. In fact, many see Bray Foam as a mere puppet of Hayes and his fellow Rujakant communists. Now, I don't really know, because I know the Equestrian War takes inspiration from a lot of real world countries, real world advance. So I don't exactly know which country this is. I want. I don't think this is the Ukraine. I mean, we have Vitenland right there, Lake City. But I really don't know. I think to make it easy, this is my first campaign in a while playing Equestrian War. I've. This is my first time ever playing the Bakaran Republic. I think we're just going to go with the tried and true SDH, just because we already have a lot of support for Harmony, and Harmony seems sounds like it's a pretty good, fairly not easy, but fairly normal path to take. So we're going to probably support these guys. Uh, let's, I guess, go ahead and do that for the election. So now we get a couple things here. We want to make sure that we get more voter support, but we don't want to get too much el electoral unrest. Finishing the election at 70% or more el electoral unrest will lead to negative consequences. Well, that's not good. Attract more moderate socialists, increase electoral resist, uh, unrest. Uh, same thing here. And this one gets rid of it. But let's go and choose a focus. So, in order to do really well, as far as I understand, somewhat, we're not going to do that yet because we don't have enough factories, we only have 11. We're going to go Dreams of a Federation. The Treaty of Coldstream was designed in such a way that the coalition members could choose to expand the treaty to certain policy areas. It is a far cry from the true political unity, but by breaking open discussion about expanding the treaty, we might be able to set up a or set a step in the direction of a true river federation. So, let's go ahead and do some uh, research. Oh, I don't remember ever remember how to do pony technologies. That looks really good. More monthly population. We only have a core population of 3.65 million, which is not very much at all. Uh, mage companies sound like they, they're really good. Or uh, oh, Pegasus is... I don't... Uh, we only have three research slots. I'm going to do what it's tried and true already. You know, I would probably like to use them just a little bit. Free civilian factories. Uh, 20%. Then build another one there. And then build military factories. Because we'll get some more factory slots later on. Dockyards. We've got some guns going. We're going to need some of that. We're going to need some of that eventually. Where we're going. And we've got all these shippies, which I'm just going to get rid of these already. So, let's see. I'm not going to use level 1 destroyers. Heck no. Level 2 destroyers are better than level 1. But these guys only have like 40 organization, 40 HP. Well, even level 1 light cruisers have triple the HP and about the same organization. So, I'm, even though these are not great to use, I'm still going to make this for now. Because we probably need screens. Let's be real. We almost always need screens. Division-wise, I'll do that. Let's do that. What type of division do we have? Garrisons. That looks pretty garbage. Republican Marines we have, I guess. They're looking not too bad. Not bad, not bad. Uh, Republican Militia. 
Uh, and we have Pegasi Guard. Should I use Pegasi Guard? Let me know in the comments below. Should I use them? They have 6.4 max speed. Marines have 4. And Republican militia have 4. Should I use this? We, we're, we're limited on what we can do. So we're going to go ahead and train some militia. Maybe make 3 divisions for now. We'll make some Republican Marines later on. And we have a total of 6 divisions. Now I haven't unpaused it yet. Group everyone up. We have 1 fleet here. Let's go ahead and get a Admiral. Cobalt Wind. Bold. I like that. I like Career Officer. I... That's okay. That's not really great. More capital ship attack, but less new AA. That is the one thing that ruins our ships. It usually is uh, AA, anti air. So go do that. Train. Indefinitely, because we want to really focus on the Navy, because I love the Navy way too much. And you guys, I'm not sure where to send you. So uh, just kind of hang out near the capital. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Let's do that and go ahead so we can let time go on. Because there's going to have to be quite a few events that we can read. Uh, infantry attack. Actually, you know what? Let's put you in two. There you go. One, two, under someone, under new management. Tough bunker? Uh, sure, why not? You can be led by, oh god, the invitation. Lily, or Water Lily frowned, leaning back or forward at her desk as she pondered the letter before her. It was a cordial message from the River Swirl, inviting her to attend a River Coalition summit in Coldstream to renew the pact. She wanted badly to go and reaffirm Bakata's commitment to the Coalition. In addition, there were important matters that needed to be addressed by all of them together. She sighed. It was, if only things were that simple. Domestically, the summit looked... Uh, loomed large. In recent years, the standing of the coalition among Bacadans had fallen considerably, and attending would do no favors for her popularity. If she was to go, Firm Scow and other anti-coalition fanatics would hammer her relentlessly in the press. Not to mention that the fact that T-Dip and Bray Foam would make hay giving speeches and riling up supporters while she would be out in the countryside entirely. Water Lily looked out her window and saw the skyline under a cloudy sky. She truly wanted to go, but perhaps now just wasn't the right time. The campaign was already in full swing, and the stakes were astronomically high. The future of Bacara hung in the balance. If not for that, she would have to accept without batting an eye. Besides, Water Lily thought, the summit would be a simple, routine affair. Surely the rest of them would be fine without her. Water Lily tapped a hoof on her desk, finally before making her decision and putting pen to paper. Regrettably, other commitments... I look forward to attending. It's only one, minus 1%, so that's fine. Uh, we need someone for the Marines. Division attack, artillery. If we're going to get a bonus to river attacks already, you might as well make it really good. Ooh, Keen Perspective. Interesting name. And then we have... Who do we have? Direct Drive? Cool. I'm going to go with Golden Target, because that seems probably like the best. Cool. It is January 1007. What a great year. Oh, look at that. Naval XP. Oh, my Goodness, oh, beautiful. So as a Water Lily stepped off the ferry that had taken her to Cold Stream, she saw River Swirls waiting at the docks to greet her. Good to see you, River Swirl said. Relief plainly evident in her voice. To be honest, I wasn't sure if you'd be able to make it. She extended a hoof and greeting. Are you kidding, us, Water Lily? I wouldn't miss this for the world. River Swirl grinned. Things are bad up there, huh? Water Lily laughed heartily as the two shook hooves. How do you shake hooves? Hmm. Nothing I can't handle. Water Lily, wait... Waved a hoof dismissingly. Just a few boisterous coalition skeptics is all. Of course, I hear things are no picnic here either. Sounds like a tough spot for the HSR to be in. No river swirl nodded knowingly. Seems like no matter what you do, you can't please everyone. Thanks. We've been having some <clears throat> difficulties with our governing partners. River swirl's voice strained slightly. However, in the end, I am confident that cooler heads will prevail. She looked off into the distance for a moment. But enough about politics. We'll have plenty of time for that later. First of all, you... All of us are going to enjoy a nice state dinner together. That does sound enticing, Water Lily said, intrigued. What's on the menu? Hopefully no deponian. The two chuckled as they walked together away from the docks. Great to be here. At least we are welcomed. So this is why I went with Dreams of a Federation first, because increase your standing by completing uh, focuses in the Dreams of a Federation branch of your focus tree. Only the first country to complete a focus gains a point, but the whole coalition shares a benefit. At the end, the country with the highest standing can form the River Federation. Which sounds like a good goal that we want. So that's why I'm going to probably beeline through this tree as much as possible. And there are going to be a lot of reading events in this episode. The delegates of the Cold Stream Summit had arrived in time and were welcomed by Chancellor River Swirl, Mayor Springtime Frost from Lake City, King Grimhoof of Deponia, President Waterlily of Bakaran Republic, King Rubber, Diamond Shield of Diamond Mountain, especially accompanied by his daughter, Princess Molly, Queen White Star of Wittenland, or the Wittenland, Strategos Pegasus, per Pegacles, of Nimbusia, and finally Tawishia, or Tawish Crimson, Neek Heart of the Ponyade Heen clans. A lavish state dinner was thrown at the old castle of Coldstream and co hosted by Chancellor River Swirl and Coalition General Reporter. From all accounts, it was a joyous occasion with a few toasts being thrown in. The evening continued with a traditional ball, though not all leaders attended. Stratagos 
Pegacles, who had already barely partaken at the state dinner, went to bed early while King R Rover Diamond Shield went back to his apartments, but was represented by his daughter Molly. The ball, attended by many honored citizens from the coalition, opened with what could have been a diplomatic faux pas. The opening dance that was supposed to feature dancers leading in duos left Water Lily hanging due to the early departure of Peg. Pegacles. Yet, Princess Molly spontaneously offered the Bakaran president to dance with her and King Grimhoof. Though awkward, the dance endeared the crowd and the fashion journalists in attendance. More gloom was Mayor Frost, who was seen dancing at the end of the ball with Chancellor Schwirl after having spent the majority of the evening riding in an alcove. Finally, the night ended on a demonstration of Anam Tyne techniques by Crimson Nick Hart and her entourage at the request of Princess Molly, drawing many cheers before all leaders finally went to bed to get some much needed rest before the various meetings of the summit. The Diamond Princess was the revelation of the night. Man, who wants to go dancing? I'd love to learn, how to learn to go dancing. Now, I don't have hooves, but that sounds like a good idea. Or a fun time, really. So by now, we've all read the disturbing reports from the West, what it literally stated, looking towards the other coalition leaders that sat around the conference table. The violence the violent persecutions on Longsword, often targeted towards pony minorities, the Civil War and Broadfeld, along with all of its despicable atrocities. She spoke in a somber tone as she listed them off. The Reverend must stand as one and condemn this bloodshed. Times as these demand that we provide strong moral leadership. Water Lily brought a hoof down force forcefully on the table. We have to make it crystal clear that the Coalition will not tolerate such injustices. White Star and Rivers will not in agreement, although some of the other leaders seem less enthusiastic. Just as she was about to continue, Water Lily was interrupted by a loud yawn from Rover Diamond Shield. Hmm. Silence filled the room, and all eyes were on Rover, who didn't seem bothered. Do you not think these matters concern us? Uh, Water Lily asked incredulously. Rover smirked and gave a shrug. They do. Water Lily shot the dog a... Well, shot the dog, but then shot the dog a determined glare. It is our responsibility to protect the rights of all creatures. This coalition is more about us than just defense. The need for protection may have brought us together, but that cannot be all that binds us. If we don't stand for what's right, what do we stand for? Well, I guess you could ask yourself, what is right? Does it change? Does it alter? The unlikely coalition. The summit consisted of a flurry of meetings, many of which allowed for bilateral deals to be made. However, there was one main event, the plenary meeting from which conclusions would be drafted, which would draft the summit's final declaration. Each spoke. River Swirl, as this year's host, opened with a cheerful, if timid speech. Stratagos Peric Pegacles spoke next, putting the meeting in a foul mood with his strict interpretation of the Trudian's defense of helotry against perceived criticism. King Grimhoof followed by trying to appease and reorient the discussion towards the issues of the West and the Slider and the Longsword. President Water Lily pounced on this and spoke of moral leadership and the need to prevent such atrocities. Queen White Star also condemned Longsword but focused on Griffinian raids and remained uncontroversial. Tawish, uh, Tawi Seich? I am sorry, I can't say that word. I am. Woo! Crimson Nick Hart advise a closer look to the south and the crimes committed in Osterland and Barad, as well as the controversial ideas of a detente with the militant nation of Caskesa. Uh, king Rover Diamond Shield openly lambasted slights against his kingdom and criticism of the continued use of slavery, requiring of his allies to instead focus on their military spending. With only the quiet mayor of Springtime Frost remaining to speak, it felt as if the summit would end on a bad note, and yet the quiet mayor instead gave a passionate speech about his pain regarding the atrocities committed west and south, the importance of beauty, of democracy, and his desire to see the coalition form closer ties. This final speech caused a pause among the attendees and then a small applause despite King Rover's disapproval. It was, after all, a rare moment. One of the agreements between the de facto leader of the status quo and the most militant nation of the coalition. Now it was on for the coalition general reporter to draft the final declaration. Cold. Oh, that's a great event title. Coldstream.30.b. I love it. And we are running out of fuel. And so, cool. Do the note if you want to read that, go right ahead. So. The March of the Proletariat. And so that this is the cause of a movement, that the poor may not continue their subservience to the capitalistic classes, that they may never feel the weight of tyranny on their shoulders and may be free from the chains that still hold them. Bray Foam's continued speech brought on cheers and shouts from the assembled crowd of posies in the dock district of Bacada City. ZDS rallies had recently intensified throughout the city in the run-up to the 1007 election, setting many in the town on edge. As a communist rallied, of other Bakaran citizens looked on in a mix of interest, curiosity, and fear. Bray Foam's speech began to reach a crescendo, rallying the crowd into even further frenzy. Reach a crescendo, or is it crescendo wing? Ooh. And so our nation may reforge itself in the flame of socialism and make for itself a new future and a nation, and eventually a coalition of our own making. Foam's remarks about the coalition worried many in other segments of society, especially the merchant classes of the city. They warned the government to try to prohibit Foam from making many of these speeches again, advising his radical foreign policy may cause a rift with the nation's allies. But just as well, many politicians point to the enshrined right to public gatherings that Bakara holds, and that trying to clamp down on foam may simply incite further violence. Whatever the choice is, ZDS seems 
set to gain. Is there democratic right? We lose support, political power, and we get more communism support, or order them to cease with their nonsense. Uh, it seems like we're gonna lose stuff regardless. Order them to cease? Or In the end, we're still gonna get more communism support. I'd rather lose political power, probably, than stability. And we also get more electoral unrest, so... And you still get 3% compared to 4. Just go ahead and do that. That's fine for us right now. That's fine. And departure. After the conclusion of the summit, River Swirl stood at the docks with Water Lily to wish her well on the trip back to Bacata. I must have repeated myself a lot in there, Water Lily mused, always talking about we have to stand as a beacon for the oppressed. They're all probably tired of hearing it, she smiled wryly. Sometimes, I wonder how many others see it that way. Water Lily sighed and looked off into the horizon. I do, Riverswell replied. Matter of factly, we're leaders, and what we say matters. We need to set an example not just for our citizens, but for the world. She swept a hoof towards Coldstream. When we speak, ponies listen. And for that to work, ponies have to trust us. Too many don't, Water Lily frowned, shaking her head. And it's not their fault. We need to earn that trust and respect. Up to now, I'm not sure we've done enough. I know what you've done that is, which is all you can do remember that you're not al in this alone river swirl chart up next to water lily i'm right there with you we both have important roles to play but in our own ways a horn blared across the calm waterfront indicating that the ferry would soon be leaving you're right water lily said before turning to face river swirl and smiling good luck in the elections you as well we can do it this is hmm we still have the courage to live up to our calling all right so how much fuel are we making we're getting a lot of fuel actually Wow. A coup attempt in Lake City. Thank goodness it's over. Oh my goodness. Like, really? Um, springtime. Oh, look at that stash. I Even I can't grow that much facial hair. Wow, that looks nice. A pretty good. What the? Well, who are you? Wave breaker. What is. What? What? State. Westerly. Leeward? Um, Supremus. What happened to the guy with the other facial pony facial hair? Um, what? Uh, well, looks like we're, looks like everything is going to get broken up. Let's see. So we want to max that out as fast as possible. I'm not going to do this yet because even though I want to get more stability, more political power gain, and daily harmony support, we really don't have a need for it yet because election electoral rest is at zero. So and so, remember, citizens of Bakara, always stay vigilant, be ready to defend your nation, and stand up to those who would tear apart our traditions. Water Lily sits in her office, tapping her hoof on the desk. The closing remarks of the new BFZ radio show are worrying. They now functioned as a significant political force for the upcoming election, and this radio channel could spread their ideas and further normalize them to the public. The BFZ's meteoric rise threatened their establishment of both Bakara's center parties, and they seem to be going all out for the 1007 runoff. This radio show, for now only localized to the Bakara urban area, seemed to be one of their primary efforts. Water Lily faced a difficult choice. Let the show remain and risk losing support in the election, or possibly damage her rivals in the BSP as well. Or she could put her hoof down, trying to limit the reach of the program, curtailing their scope to broader Picard and Republic, but also provoking more extreme responses in her term. Picard's democracy was certainly not in, in, in an in enviable position. At least the music is nice. BFZ has 24% support. We have 25% for SDH. BSP loses support as well. Get more popular supremacy, lose political power. Uh, I don't want to lose stability. Yeah, we're going to go with that again. I don't like seeing this. And we're out of political power. Hmm... It does not make me feel good now, does it? Do we have any planes? Oh, we might not have any planes. Oh, dude, ships. Emperor's dead. Our condolences. Ah, Grover. I have played as that nation once. I have. Ah, dreams of a federation. Great. So, River Science Society joins the society. Huh. Invest in Deponia. Invest in Ponade Heon. Uh, where is all this stuff? Where, is, it, is, it, is it in my lands? No? Oh, crap. It's not. Um, where's this? Oh, th it's down here. Do I really want to invest in those people down there? Send delegations. I do want to get that extra point, though. So let's go to the River Science Society. The different countries that comprise the treaty all have their own different universities with their own expertise. Encouraging an exchange of knowledge and of students themselves will help all member states to broaden their horizons and push the boundaries of science towards the modern age. Sounds like a good thing. Oh, we got a lot of political power now. Nice. Military training? Army XP game more. Eh, it's not really worth it. So we gotta do something here. Uh, BSP loses support. Well, that's not really. We want to make sure that the commies and the supremacy people lose support. So ZDS loses support. We get two percent. I kind of like that one. Oh, BSZ. Actually, I like both of these. We could probably actually do both. Oh, we can't do both at the same time. Okay. That's important. Yeah.
Cool. Can only get 1.07 a day. That's pretty average. And Love Leech's wish is to trade. Changelings, ancient monsters capable of shape-shifting and sucking their victims dry emotionally. Are they Dementors? Arrived upon our shores with an offer to trade, hailing from the island of Grenicleth. These insectoid ponies have come with urgent requests to open up trade routes as part of a national effort to promote harmonic elements in their society. On one hoof, they're changelings who shouldn't be trusted, as per the old mare's tales. On the other hoof, they are still tales. Perhaps we should give these bugs a shot and show us how harmonic they really are. So they're from this island over here. It's a good thing they're over. Hello there, Queen Gaitha. Hmm. Light purple hair. Hmm. Hmm. You got me kind of interested now. If these changings are actually truly harmonic, we will find out soon. Come out soon. Keep people skeptical. Careful with them. Never these creatures are nothing but beasts, wolves, and sheep's clothing. Let's see what happened. We're on, you know, a historical. I don't know what's going to happen. Even if it, even if it was on historical, I still don't know what would happen. Pico Lindy becomes prime minister. Interesting. Military training. We got 23 days. We got some. We got a while, and we want to get the first one there. I would love to form the River Coalition. I'll say to our full River Union members. Oh my gosh! The Battle of Cod Street. Bradley now. Oh, Bakarian's donation calls to you. The call went out over the radio to members of the Z BZF across the city of Bakara. Inflamed by rumor that the ZDS was planning to hold a rally out in front of the BSZ headquarters, Radio Bakara Enot Nost called on all of its supporters to coalesce at the party office, and the crowd obeyed the call. Once there, the crowd milled all with uh, no aim. The spontaneous counter demonstration had nothing to, with, to act against, so they created themselves a target. One Earth Pony in the crowd shouted, If the Reds won't come to us, let's go to them. <laughs> oh, wow. And so the march on 37 Cod Street, the ZDS central office began. As news filtered across the city, various worker groups left their jobs and arrived at Cod Street, and eventually, Bray Foam appeared as well. He called on all ZDS members to block the destructive ride from reaching Cod Street. At the same time, police units began to mobilize. As the, as the BFZ crowd approached Cod Street, they came face to face along with the intersection of Cod Street and Merriweather. By now, the police had arrived, but they stayed away from the heart of the protest, not wishing to insert incite further violence. But as the crowds came face to face, one cult picked up a rock and threw. Oh boy. The BFZ began to advance, trying to push the ZDS back to their office, and police tried to keep order. One last push made it by the advancing crowd to make it through, but at the end of the day, they managed to push through. Uh, more unrest. Bakara pony power goes down. The ZDS. Well, let's see. So basically, someone's going to gain, someone's going to lose. Let's take a look, look at this. So who's more powerful? The BFZ is more powerful, so we're going to limit them. Yeah. BFZ needs to go down. BFZ gains 4%. The ZDS prevents the march from going through. Ah, they're good. that's better. So we really need to hurt this commie socialist people. There we go. Cool. Oh, it's slowly going down. Nice. TTIP criticizes the government. As you can clearly see by the events that transpired on Cod Street a few days ago, the SDH government does not have the resources or the will to curb the violence growing in our nation. Water Lily has proven herself incapable of handling the current national crisis. The T uh, see, T Dip stood at the door, uh, at the door to a popular restaurant in Bakara, holding an impromptu press meeting with reporters, wanting to know her view about the recent conflict at Cod Street. I tell you, she could have solved an issue like that if the march were towards the presidential palace. But I must be going now. What would you like to do then? One reporter shouted from the crowd. T dip pause. I suppose I would ask the Marines to intervene. I wonder if Miss Lily would have the courage to do that. Oh, she's single. I mean, you could ask her, the reporter snapped. Smiling softly to herself, T dip replied. That sounds like a great idea. Here's a story for your papers. I challenge Water Lily to civil debate on all matters of national policy. I hope to see her there. Wow. T dip trotted away to her car with a throng. I was, I was about to say thong, but throng of reporters following her, leaving only the reporter that had questioned T dip left. Uh, looking out towards the vehicle, driving away, Water Lily raised a brim on her hat. A debate, huh? I wonder, I guess that's how she's playing it. Putting her hat back down, she disappeared into the urban Bacada night. Oh, of course. Oh, okay. We just lose stability there. Come on, man. Or pony. Come on, ponies. That is evil. Oh, God. 20% already. Um, We can go ahead and reassure the people first. Let's do that first, because we are, we are doing terrible. 22%? Uh, we're going to reassure the people, and then we're going to have to put down some of these guys. Yeah, we're going to attract the moderate socialist. We're going to lose stability. We get more daily harmony support. Does having this, this affect anything at all? Friendship games. Oh, cool. Quaint, but not our concern. Actually, Water Lily, born in 964. So she's like 43, huh? Oh, God, the debate. So, the debate. On a story night in the capital, an enormous crowd of ponies gathered inside the Carrick Civic Center to witness the grand debate between Water Lily and T-Dip. Up on the stage, the two rivals stood beside, or behind, opposite podiums. T dipped smiling and looking out at the crowd while Water Lily remained focused on her opponent. Between them sat the debate moderator, an old stallion and a respected journalist. The moderator asked for the room to quiet and then cleared his throat. T dipped, 
you have often criticized the current government for its allocation of spending. What would you do to prioritize in your administration? My foremost priority would always be protecting the citizens of Akara and safeguarding their liberties. To guard against external threats, we absolutely need greater investments in national defense. TJ pauses, polite uh, stomps ripple throughout the audience. However, as far as the recent unrest goes, I am not afraid to say that the fighting and riots in the streets are the product of our failed status quo. These angry ponies distrust a government that has made far too many promises and failed to keep them. It's only natural that it would be blamed when so many are plunged in economic deprivation. The cure for all of this is greater political and economic freedom. With a liberty as our guide, we can unite and unleash the full potential of our nation. T-Dip brought a hoof down hard on the podium, drawing loud cheers from the crowds. After the raucous noise had died down, the moderator turned to Water Lily. You may respond. Where to begin? Let me start by saying that I do believe in liberty, but I also believe in fairness. Water Lily frowned and spoke with a solemn tone. After all, unlimited freedom means the freedom of the strong to abuse the weak and the freedom for the deprived to remain deprived until at last waste away from the neglect. If my opponent is to be believed, freedom is a cure for all our ills, but let me remind you that an easy solution is very often not one at all. It is an unavoidable fact that solving our nation's problems will require a strong government that helps our citizens, not a weak one that leaves them to fend for themselves. Water literally makes a good point. DSP. Uh, so it looks like we're going to lose... Why do we always lose political power, man? I don't want to lose any more support, so Water literally makes a good point. Oh, and we have some war going on. Cool. And we have another division being made. Lovely, my friends. Lovely. Oh, let's have go on. And we only have 25. That's coming along. Just make... Oh, boy. Uh, We're getting more daily army speed. I'm going to leave it at 1 for now. Just because we need to train. And I need to build more ships. At least one more. Nice. Offer and guarantee was accepted by Water Towns. And other people. Cool. So since we're here... Let's actually go ahead and upgrade this. Uh, that's all we can do. Oh, never mind. Maybe we can't upgrade this. Oh, I'm getting heartbroken as I'm looking through this. I'm very heartbroken now, but now we have cruiser armor, which actually, I, which is, it's insane that we don't already have that. Um, instead of that, we could do secondary batteries, medium batteries, rapid fire. We could throw that one on there. Let's go and get, get some of that. I like that. And torpe I always like torpedoes, but really, I just use these guys as screens. Do we not have anti-air? Hmm... This won't help with anti-air, will it? No. Mm. You know what? Screw it. Let's try it. Uh, did I just convert that? No. Oh, this just has a high... Why are you up above that one? Huh. Alright, well, whatever. And it looks like we we're at risk of another country assuming leadership at the rover, rover, river level... River, Coalition, Faction. Words are hard, my friends. Coal and Steel Community. Huh, resource efficiency gain. One standing point? Cool, well, so we can try that. So, initially proposed by the Foreign Minister of the River Co Republic, Calm Current, the River Coal and Steel Community will be an organization to regulate the industrial production of all Riverland states. The goal of this is to ensure continued peace and cooperation between all member states by creating a common market for coal and steel, thus neutralizing competition over resources. Cool. And do we get another point? Do we get a point initially? Yes, we did. That's awesome. We actually got a point. We are ahead of everyone else right now, which is which feels a little good. Uh, let's see. We need more deployed manpower. We need more factories. Oh, man. that Not looking too good for manpower right now. Oh, boy. Electronic mechanical engineering. Cool. Let's just grab more research speed. That'd be good. That'd be very good. Only gets not that much naval XP every day. That That's heartbreaking. We're in volunteer only, which is fine extensive conscription. What do we have around here? Ah, the death of Rift Stain. Word comes to us today that Rift Stain, a well-known agitator with ties to the BFZ, was found dead last night in what is suspected to be a politically motivated assassination. The incident took place outside a residence in Vitalizia, and the identity of the assailant is still unknown at this time. In response, BFZ candidate from Scowl has re released the following statement. Rift Stain, or Strain, was a brave pony. Outspoken in her love for liberty and an unflinching champion of the downtrodden who was abruptly taken from us in a despicable and cowardly way. In light of this loss, we must not allow her cause to fade from our memories. She knew better than any pony that the River Coalition is not to be trusted. And so she famously wrote, It is a hypocritical institution not worthy of our faith. An institution which has given free reign to slavers and despots. And an institution which sits idly and stays silent while evil festers within it. Let's see. She made it her mission to warn us that if we do nothing, 
There will come a time when all ponies are of virtue are crushed beneath an iron hoof of injustice. Ponies like T-Dip and Water Lily tragically refuse to heed this warning, and as it is so my solemn pledge to a rift-strained memory that, if elected, my first act would be to formally withdraw our republic from the corrupt River Coalition, so that we may lay the foundation for a new, truly righteous order for the Riverlands. Oh, let's see. That's not bad. Any sort of agriculture, not bad. Uh, I'd love to get this, because I love political power too much. Ebony Wing. Hmm. Sound charm. Well, let's come over here. We need to choose... Actually, we're not at the bottom anymore. These two are at the top. BFZ, ZDS. Let's see. 25%. ZDS. That's how many... Uh, I'm not really sure. Well, you just attacked us, so we could probably steal stuff from them, reassure them. Do that first. Oopsie. I press Alt. My bad. Cool. That time go on, and have a good time, period. Uh, summer sun celebration. Very good, very good. The funeral of Rift Strain. The city of Vetagil has become engulfed by violent protests as tensions with which have long been simmering at the last boiled over following the funeral of Rift Strain. An outspoken anti-communist, Rift Strain earned enmity from the ZDS for dismissive reviews of the works of Caramel Marx. Huh. As well as her connection for, to union-busting activities in the course of her work as an industrial psychologist. For such a divisive figure, many citizens expected that the procession might not go smooth so smoothly, and it was no surprise when ponies sympathetic to the ZDS appeared to protest at, her at the funeral. Their peaceful presence quickly turned ugly as our militia members appeared on the side of the BFC. The ensuing confrontation fortunately has not resulted in any deaths, but is yet another sy symptom of Bacada's growing polarization, and the nation is starkly divided as to which side should shoulder blame for the dust-ups. Why do we lose support again? Oh, you hurt me so much. You got more divisions already? Wow, that's nice. Very good. The Condemnation. Although the recent chaos in Unrested Vetalji has died down, the question remains as to which side of the confrontation bears greater responsibility for the escalation. The populace waits an official statement on the matter, and for our verdict, which will have much weight for any ponies still sitting on the fence. It is our duty to consider this matter carefully and to come to a fair conclusion. BFZ has decried the protest at Rift's Strain's funeral as inappropriate and hugely disrespectful to the family of the slain pony. Uh, though sympathetic to the ZDS has countered that the BFC was the first to politicize her death, claiming that the inflammatory statement released by the firm Scowl immediately after Strain's assassination was bound to provoke a response. The question for us remains, should we side with the BFC and condemn the communists for organizing the protest, or should we defend the ZDS as merely exercising their right to free expression? 2%. Oh, we get up more score. Who do we, do we, who do we hate more? The ZDS or the BFZ? ZDS or BFZ? Ah, commies. Uh, this one. ZDS are clearly at fault. We're going to lose political power anyway, so... At least we're trying our best. Yeah, we're still 41. That's not bad. Stable trade? I, that's really good. I love stable trade. Trade, trade. Oh, that pony powers. Oh, it breaks my heart seeing that. Oh, why do you hurt me so? Why? Five days, attract more moderate socialists. We lose a little bit of stability. Oh, actually, we gain stability a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we have 50%. Let's go ahead and lower that just by a little bit. For the love of God, I really hope that we can contest these guys. I really want us to win. So, the river and steel community. Uh, invest in Deponia, 70 days, 70 days. Is it really worth investing in this way? Uh, what I see so far isn't really interesting. That's not bad. Review the officer core, fresh meat. I love meat. Reform the system, the Bacada militia system, scrap the system with NV, create the BLK, Kurastelka, heavier firepower, army motorization efforts, and what's over here? Construction stuff stick to the seas, I like that. Finish Iron Bull Railway Project or plan? Huh, building slots. The ponies are the future. Combat illiteracy, that might be really good to do. Oh, I don't know which way to go. You guys, let me know in the comments, wait, in comments in, down below. What direction should I go? Should I do some of this? Because we could prospect for stuff. We can combat illiteracy. This looks pretty good. Increase our devel society development level. You know, with all a lot of these mods, TNO, Equestrian War, they really want to go on bef just more than just do warfare. They're talking about building society, and I love that so much. But let's invest in Deponia first. Deponia is one of the lesser developed members of the treaty. To strengthen our relations with them and to make our ally able to contribute more to the alliance, we can invest in Deponia. Purchasing a significant patch of forest for industrial development will surely help our friends along. And we get one more to this. Good. It seems like no one is really concerned about this, so we're the leader, which is great. Civil War and Millennium? Mm, that's not good, is that? Oh. Deer's Republic. 
T-Dips speech, which will be the last we will probably read in this episode. Folks, it doesn't take a pony with a fancy university education to see that Water Lily's programmers just haven't worked. T-Dip trusted around the stage, addressing her supporters at a packed rally and Koltovac Gornizhi. I know Water Lily is a well-meaning and honorable pony, but good intentions are no substitute for good leadership, and putting Bacadans first is what a good leader ought to do. T-Dip gestured towards her audience in a wide sweeping motion. What has happened to a great nation? The rising prominence of political extremists, ponies fighting in the streets. I come to tell you that this is all a result of pan riverdenism Gone too far. Forceful stomping of agreements that come from the crowd. Is this supposed to be Austria-Hungary? Now I'm a skeptic when it comes to the River Coalition. Not because I harbor any ill will towards our River Pony cousins. Right now it's plain to see that the Coalition elects popular legitimacy and transparency and that protecting our rights of Riverlanders is the furthest thing from its mind. Angry shouts came from the audiences, denouncing the Coalition. T-Dip nodded as she paused and waited for them to subside. The current government is far too eager to surrender our sovereignty to the Coalition's wasteful bureaucracy. Although it has brought us some economic benefits, I pledge to oppose all calls for closer economic integration from- Oh my goodness, what's going on? On certain times. Uh, institution is see closer political integration from other members of the coalition. Let us not allow this institution to become a new ball and chain for Bacada. T Dip's proclamation was greeted with rap rapturous cheers from the crowd, only growing louder as she stepped down from the stage to shake hooves with her supporters. Can you please stop lowering my popularity, please? We only have 160 days. This is not going well for us. I hope we chose the right way. But unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today, my friends. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you all tomorrow. Ooh, new Daring Do book. Where we shall attempt to do the best we can with the election. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.